And today we have an amazing show. We're going to have something that I'm sure that everyone is going to enjoy. We have a family here that have given us very, very, very successful stories, amazing organizing, writers. I mean, it's really amazing. So let's wait no more and start with this amazing show. Roger, back in 1970, you came to Bromont to the Question Park and you were born and raised on a horse farm. And very proudly, you have shown us that you are a great horseman. In 1976, you held the Olympics there in the Vermont Equestrian Park, and now you operate it on a yearly basis, and you hold more than 10 competitions, including FEI. So thank you very much for having the time to join us, Roger. Also, we have Mario. So Mario, it's a great rider. Everyone knows him. He's been winners of five stars, four stars, nation stuff. He holds a record that until today, no one has been able to break. With only 19 years old, he won the World Cup final in Gothenburg. He jumped in Seoul and was fourth in the team competition. And in Los Angeles in 1984, he was fourth individual. And we're going to talk about his horse, Aramis. And then we have Lucy, our third generation. So Lucy, at only 21 years old, daughter of Lisa and Mario, both Grand Prix riders, winning of the North American Riders Championship, the U25. She won competitions in the four stars FEI shows, four or five stars, Nations Cup member with the USA. She competed in the final of the Nations Cup in Barcelona in 2018. She's a bronze medalist in the team competitions in the Pan American Games in Lima. And some very things that is important is in the Hampton Classic, he won the qualifier, the, the four star, and in the Grand Prix, she was second. Who won? Mario heard that. So that was amazing. So first and second, Marusi. So again, thank you very much to the Lord and all of you to have the time to be here. Thank you. All right. Roger, so how do you feel having all this experience and running the Bromont International, working with Mario and you training initially since the beginning? Tell us a little bit about your story and how was your experience and your life in the sport? Well, it was kind of uh, very difficult to be in that sport. You know, I decided I was 15 years old to earn my living in the sport horses because we were uh, born and raised on the farm but was not that was not that quality of horses but we start an early 70 to uh here in Bromont to promote uh, the place and open the, the this uh, the question center to the public because it was a private place at that time it was uh, too early for the sport in quebec it was not known enough to be private so we here we have quite good success. Uh, Mario, when we were in Bromo, I think he was five, six years old. At the Olympic game in 76, he was 11. I think that was his kick, kick, kick off to be a, a writer <laughs> like he is now. So uh, it was a very nice career. I'm still very active. I think I will be active forever. I don't want to stop. Uh, as long as I am surrounded with my old man there, Leopoldo, and the young one around, I'm still go forever. Well, let me tell you one thing, Roger. Leopoldo has a picture driving a tractor, okay, and something happened with a bridge, and that tractor went backwards. Uh, what happened there? I think the tractor and the bridge was the problem. I think that was the guy behind the wheel. <laughs> so <laughs> we did some preparation for the show. I think it was 10 years ago, 12 years ago. I don't remember exactly. So Leopoldo was a little bit cranky, you know. So he was harrowing the, the ground and everything. And he had the, 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 the backhoe right on top. 
So I said, he's old enough. He should know to, to have the bag go down when we work on the field, on the ground. Anyway, I just five minutes before, I want to tell him to put the bag go down. But I said, he knew enough. You know, he's older than me, so he, he should know enough. So he came out of the ring like crazy on one wheel and he hit the bridge and boom, they opened the door up in the air. <laughs> it was at the end of the day it was funny because nobody got hurt and the tractor had nothing but you know it was uh, quite a scene <laughs> and also was a learning experience not to put leopold in a tractor never again but that was his last time at home anyway <laughs> <laughs> Mario, uh, like like I said during the um, the introduction of your resume, you have a record that no one has been able to break until now. Uh, with only 19 year old, you won the you won the World Cup finals. Take us back to those memories. Well, this is um, it's always a, a great great memory when we talk about this. For me, um, you know, coming from uh, Bromont. Uh, that that first year uh, in 1983, exactly, I'm at my first time on the team in Washington and in New York and Toronto, and I qualified to go to the World Cup in those three shows. And then I, I find myself going to Gothenburg for the first time and, uh, you know, not really thinking anything of it. First day went very very well and then the second day i win and all of a sudden i'm in the lead going in the last day and um you know I, my horse at that at, at this time in my career i didn't know what pressure was i don't think my horse knew it either and um you know had a great day and uh, here i am winning the world cup at 19. Well, good for you. I mean, and I'm sure I saw the video the other day and it was an amazing ride. So congratulations. So Lucy, you were part of the bronze medal in the Pan American Games. Take us about how you handled the pressure at only 20 years old, jumping with the greatest and uh, having a bronze medal there. I think, I mean, it was a surreal experience to be able to do that at 20 and there were definitely moments throughout the week where I could have handled the pressure a little bit better, but at the end of the day, I have such a good relationship with that horse and I, I really trust him 100%. So I really used that and piggybacked off of him, um, you know, to feel confident going into each round and, you know, it uh, turned out really well. I had an amazing support system. My teammates, uh, you know, rode really well. Their horses went great and, you know, that goes a long way. Well, for sure, it was a great pleasure to see you ride in Lima. And uh, I know everyone remembers those Pan American Games actually came out to be OK. So it was it was good for everyone. But I'm sure Leopoldo has a lot of questions. We are we're unmuting him. So go ahead, Leopoldo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to Lucy, I don't talk to the old man here. I'm talking too much to be the old man. I, I want to ask him to Lucy. Who is the star of the family? She, she, I am sure she will come to be uh, the the best. Uh, Lucy, you training with different trainers, uh, mainly with Mario, but after you go into different trainers, uh, do you think this helping to you a lot? That giving different tips to all of them. Yeah, 100%. I think in anything, getting a variety of perspectives is always helpful. And, you know, I train with my dad every day at home and, you know, most of the time at the show. Um, and getting, you know, being able to get tips from other people. Uh, I've been super fortunate to have help from McLean and Beezy's helped me a little bit. And I think, obviously, they're two of the greatest riders in our sport. So, you know, it's pretty great to be able to get feedback from them. Um, and yeah, I don't think you go wrong by trying to learn from everyone. Uh, and now, based on the same, now a give from me a Mario. chance to Mario. do the, the... Wait, hold on. Ya va, ya va. Ya va, un segundo. <laughs> Wait, I have, I have a question, and this is actually a very real question because I don't know the answer. 
So, Mario, have, are you working with Michael Matt on a sort of a training also? Because I've seen Mario, are you with Michael in the warm up rings? Are you working with them? Well, when, when I was 14, 15, my first uh, year that I went to Florida, my father sent me with Michael to, to train for the winter there. So there's always been a relationship with Michael for, you know, 30 years now. So when I see him, he, he, uh, he comes to the barn and he helps on the flat. And um, I try to bring Michael in the sport a little more. He does the racehorses, but he also helps his kids. And um, it's a, good, it's a good, good idea and good fun to have him. And he's always very helpful. And he, he's a great, always was a great rider and a great horseman. So there's lots to learn uh, with Michael. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Carolo. Roger, uh, when your son takes part in the Nations Cup for Canada and your granddaughter for the USA, how do you feel in this moment? Do you have your heart broken, you know? <laughs> well, uh, for sure, it's nice to, to see Mario back uh, riding for Canada. And it's also extraordinary to see Lucy ride for the United States sometime against his father. It's fantastic. I think it's great. <laughs> Leo. Roger, Roger, <laughs> it, it, uh, when it, Mario yep. start to teaching the the children, your son, uh, normally is not very easy. He, you you training a lot of people, but and you was the the training for trainer for Mario for a long time too. He he did the same. You did the same thing that he did. He do with Lucy. But how is this to train your son and be so successful, young in the in the World Cup final and the Olympic Games and all of this? Well, at the beginning, you know, uh, Mario was very very sportive, so that was kind of uh, easy to to train him because. You want to win badly, so that way you don't have to push him. Uh, someday we had some some discussion. You know, it's normal, uh, and then we decide when we come back home, we forget the training and the riding and the work. So at home, we try to avoid those discussions. The, the only hard moment we had, I think, it was at the beginning when we had some nice horses. And I was a horse dealer also. It was very hard to sell the one you want with. <laughs> so I remember a best mare called Venus, a hunter. I think I sold her twice and I bought her back because it was not totally agreeable for him. <laughs> so, but at the end of the day, it was easy because we, his job was to ride me. That was to find the horses at that time. And we were quite fortunate because when he was junior, we had a bunch of nice horses. We, had, we can say we have between two and four nice jumper all the time. We won the, the Florida circuit. We won everywhere. And uh, for him, uh, we didn't have to push very hard to, to, to make him, uh, uh, let's say, uh, in, the, in the jump off, try to win, I mean, we have to slow him back. We didn't have to push him very hard. So it was fun and quite easy. Mario, Mario, you have good horses for many times. You have Aramis and you have many good horses. And uh, it's difficult for a rider to have so many good horses. Your father helping you at the beginning to find, to find the horses, and now you find very good horses. Is a special trick for this that you learning from him, or you is a special? See how, but not many have the, the fortune and the the eye to find good horses. You have you have this quality. I think I think Leopoldo. Um... 
I sat on very good horses, very young in my career. So I think I have the feel for what it takes in a horse to be successful. Um, you know, thanks to Roger, we got Aramis when he was only, I think, five years old. So uh, with that horse, I felt what a horse should be scope-wise because this horse could jump could jump a, a building, he could jump anything. And I think also uh, the people I deal with in Germany, my, my, uh, my partner or my friend Michael, he's also uh, very savvy. He's on the board of the Holsteiner Verbon. So uh, with all these tools, and through the years, like you say, I've been lucky. I've, I've bought Rico, R Dash, Aster, Asterix. Uh, now I have Amsterdam, Bartolina. We, we've had Sella. We've had so many good horses. But I think it's a combination of having felt what a good horse feels like. And also, I'm, I'm more intense to buy a horse with a lot of blood than less blood. Uh, that's what I prefer. So with the experience now, you know, I've been buying horses for, for 35 years. So I hope I can do the same for Lucy to, to keep her in the sport at a high level. Yes, that, that is very Lucy. interesting now. And, uh, you know, now going back to the quality of the horses and with the rules of the boots. Do you think the horses are going to be different now when the new, that when the boots are not going to be allowed? I'm talking about the pressure boots starting January 1st. You think the horses, the rounds, the, what, what, what do you think is going to happen? Well, I can tell you, Cesar, that um, in our, in the Deloria family here, we barely use the boots. So for us, it's not going to change anything. So I, I'm, I will welcome the time when the boots are not allowed. We're ready for it. All right. Well, but a lot of people use the boots. But you, so you think what the quality of the horses actually is going to improve or we're going to see like a drastic change or for us that are outside the ring, it's going to be basically the same. It's more of a course designers that need to adjust. I th uh, my opinion is that uh, you'll need good horses. You need you'll need horses that can jump as good, you know, better with their hind end. But uh, also, you will need to ride better. I think uh, the rider is going to make a big difference. And uh, uh, you know, of course, people now they 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 put on the boots right before they go in. Uh, on some horses, it helps a lot. So I think uh, the rider is going to have to make up for this. So it's it's going to be much more difficult for for some people to compete without boots. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Sorry, Carola, you are going to ask something. I interrupt you. Sorry. Oh no! Don't worry, Roger. What did you feel in the world? Cup final of Gothenburg 84 when you saw Norman de Lojoyo, Neko Pessoa, Malcolm Pyra, and Nick Skelton behind your son with 19 years old? Well, um, like Mario said before, I don't think he realized he was there. <laughs> so he, he realized it was at the final of the World Cup, but he rode the same as he rode uh, when he was 17, 18, 19, you know, tried to go every time to win, you know, actually, he, he, he have two speeds, stop and fast. So he, he, he used the same one and it was fantastic to see that. I remember um, seeing uh, Pessoa with his son, he was about six, seven year old. Uh, and then Norman, uh, it was a bit of a surprise to everybody, but at the end of the day, not a big surprise. That's the way I see it. That's good. Yeah. But Mario, what you said before, uh, when you had Aramis, you, you had a, a pretty good horse called B-Wolf when you were on the team as a speed horse. 
I think it was quite a nice horse too, if you remember well, right? Yes, that was a horse that definitely was uh, a horse you could go really fast on and, and you learned to go fast because he only had one speed. So that, that, you know, I got a lot of good experience also with my junior jumpers in those days. And Mario, Lucy. now that you are training Lucy, do you see much of a difference of the sport when you were a junior and a young rider and now Lucy? What is the major difference if there is one? Um, you know, Time have changed a little. Obviously, the facilities are they're beautiful. You know, when she won at the the Kentucky Horse Park, it's a great facility where Wag was. Um, maybe I also went to beautiful places in Mexico uh, as a junior uh, around the world in France, but. Um, I think it's, you know, I think it's a bit the same. It, it's, it's a great international sport and, and uh, the kids are all riding very well. You just brought up a bit differently. That, that's the only what I see different. In the States, there's a lot of equ equitation ways that brings up kids that they have to do their, maybe their positions are better, their feel. But in our, in our days, I, I feel that we were maybe riding more like the English kids with the, the ponies, how they learn over there. But uh, that's mainly the difference I see. Okay, and this takes me to the next question for Lucy. Lucy, in several shows that we had here, the word horseman and how much the rider is involved with the horse in the daily care of the horse and getting to understand and communicate with the horse, a lot of the people say that the younger generations are not as horsemen as the older generations. Um, I believe that you are a great horseman because I've seen you that you are very close to your horse. But do you feel your peers or the people that you know that are your age, you think they lack a little bit of horsemanship or what, what, what's your opinion? I don't think that's necessarily true across the board. I think, I mean, obviously I don't know the way that, you know, my dad, was raised and you know the people of his generation firsthand but from my peers i think i'm surrounded by a lot of great horsemen and women and um i mean at least in the states with the equitation and i don't know if you would say it's a trend but a lot of people competing who are also in school full-time like myself um i think that ine inevitably takes away some time that we get around the horses and you know, for me, my dad was saying a few months ago not to, you know, make it a silver lining. But the one thing about being home and away from school for so many months due to uh, COVID is that I've, you know, I've been able to ride more than ever. And I think that I've gotten a lot, you know, closer to my horses and their care and the, you know, organization of our facility um, because of that time. So. I hope that I've become a better horsewoman because of it. I don't, I can't really speak for my peers and, you know, everything they do day to day. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think we try to be, you know, the best we can and learn from everyone. And, you know, in that way, all be better horsemen and women. Leopoldo. Lucy, in, the, in your writing, you have your father who helping you a lot, but you have your mother too. She is a good rider. She riding in uh, big classes too. And she been for a long time in the sport. Your mother gave it to you a lot of influence too, or, uh, and she helping you a lot. Yeah, 100%. I think, um, I'm so fortunate to have two parents who know so much about the sport and, and and have been involved in it for so long. She doesn't like to talk about her show jumping career and, you know, some people may not even know the amazing things she was able to accomplish in the sport, but I try to use that to my advantage. I think, you know, we talk horses all day long. So um, in all aspects of the sport and my career and my dad's and 
you know, everything we do day to day. Um, it's definitely something we do as a family. So I try to use everything I can from their, you know, knowledge and expertise. So my, you know, my mom plays a huge part in the way I participate in the sport, 100%. Mario, um, in the 80s, you have one of the best horses in the world, like Haramis. And at the moment, you have you have uh, two super horses, like Bardolina and um, Amsterdam. Which, what do you think about the evolution of you know in these 40 years um, of, of difference? You know. Well, Aramis was a power jumper, um, very docile. Uh, you know, if I would say maybe a bit a bit of an older fashioned German horse in those years. Mm -hmm. Right now, my two horses are completely the opposite. They're very close to the blood, very light. Uh, I mean, they could, they could be two thoroughbreds really when you look at them. So this is the evolution in the breeding. I think uh, in the German breeding, uh, French breeding was always a bit closer to the blood. But uh, uh, the two horses I have, a Clarimo and a Katoki, uh, they look like uh, they look like Ferraris. They don't look like uh, long limousine anymore. Okay. Mm. I have a question for Roger. Roger, you've been organizing events for I don't know, fifty years, forty years. Um, and you have to deal with high maintenance clients, okay? What do you think is the key factors in order to have a successful event from the organizer's point of view? Is it just the footing? Is it the stables? Is this is the price list? What do you think are the key factors and why? Well, I think today uh, it's everything. Uh, footing, is, I think it's the first, and then the, the place. Here in Bromo, we're a little lucky. The, the park is about uh, two kilometers from the city. The city is composed of, uh, I don't know, a dozen of nice restaurants, nice hotel, golf course, um, uh, a water slide. After the day, the family or the rider can bring their kids to the water slide. We, we uh, for the family also, there's a big zoo in Grand Bay, which is about 10 minutes. Uh, from the showground, it's about five minutes from the best spot. Uh, that's one part. Footing, facility, and then money. It's uh, in Quebec here, we, like we're not in New York or Toronto. The economy is good, but the tradition in the French Canadian people it just started to be, it started in 1976 with the Olympic game. So that's another uh, uh, facet of that. Uh, the place, we're lucky, Bromo appeal, good spectator. You know, on a good Sunday, we have very often five, 6,000 people, uh, Saturday, three, 4,000. So we have about 40,000 during the week. Um, the city is very behind us. Uh, the, the, the economy, uh, the retombe, I, I don't say that, the retombe economic in the Bro city of Bromont, it's about five to seven million every year during the international show. And right now we try to improve all the time the show. Now I just uh, form a partnership with the owner of the Formula One Grand Prix in Montreal. We're going to start to work together to next year. We were supposed to start this year, but with the COVID, it was not possible. So the FAI show was canceled. I'm looking forward to offer uh, a bigger show again next year. And the VIP, I think it's everything today. You cannot say it's only one thing, but first of all, it's footing in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. Oh, very important. Congratulations Mario. on that partnership, Roger. I'm sure that good times. I'm excited to see what happens next year. Yeah, he's got the know-how of a big show, and we really want to build up uh, this uh, Grand Prix in Bromo, uh, the same quality of the Formula One Grand Prix. That's our goal.
Oh, Mario, Mario eh, as a rider in the sport, eh, for example, in soccer or in other sport, when the athletes are at home, they have a plus, but uh, I don't know, normally winning more. And you have two places that you're winning a lot in Canada, who are Spruce Meadows and Bromont. How, how, what, what is the difference to jumping for you to jumping in Canada in these two places or jumping in the other part of the world the, as an athlete? What, what are your different feelings for you? Well, I think, uh, you know, since Bromo has been started in, in 1974, I think, uh, or 75, the pre Olympics. So it's always been. Obviously, my own field advantage there in Bromo. Everybody knows me, and it's always very, I'm a, uh, what I say, it's always a lot of fun for me to come back and compete in Bromo. I think, uh, you know, when you have all the spectators behind you, they know when you come in the arena, you can feel the cheers. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it kind of raises your level and you want to perform well for your own crowd. Uh, also, when we all go, all Canadian, when we go to Spruce Meadows, um, it's, it's amazing to walk in the international arena under the clock tower and you got, let's say on the, a nation's cup day at, at the Masters or, or the CN, you got 60,000 people. Uh, you know, I've never felt anything like this in my life. When you walk in there, you you feel your horse's heart beat. And, uh, you know, some horses grow, some horses get a little more timid, but it's a, it's a great feeling. To you, Lucy, your place is the Hampton, but you live, yes, beside the Hampton. Where you feel more comfortable, in Bromont or in the Hamptons? Um, I don't know. I mean, I've spent <laughs> my whole life down here, and I feel like my home show is the Hampton Classic. I think um, it definitely helps that, you know, my mom is a huge part of putting that show on, so I feel like we work really closely with making that happen, and she's done a phenomenal job. In doing so um that was also my first horse show i ever did when i was four years old or five years old um so you know i have a lot a lot of memories there um but i will say competing in bromont and that's where i did my first grand prix with hester and it's a it's a cool feeling like my dad said you go in the ring and you know the people are behind you even though i compete under the american flag so both places are definitely special Roger, Roger, what did you find uh, Aramis for your son in Germany? He was young, he was old. No, he, we find him here. But first of all, I had a, a client at that time, comes to Laurent Baudouin, and he saw Mario going good and want to win and want to do something. And one day he said, Roger, find a horse, I find the money. So we look, we look around, we look around, and then uh, he liked to go at the Olympic in 84. But I mean, we were in 82. I mean, uh, the, 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 the time was very short. And then this is this man and the Austrian guy from uh, Austria, Mr. Himmelmeyer, just bought uh, a flight full of horses. I think he bought 20 from Verdun auction in Germany. So. One day, Mr. Baudouin have a, a car tour with his wife, stop at that place, and fall in love with that horse by looking at him in the stall. <laughs> so he called me the next day, he said, Roger Goosey, that is a lovely horse. I said, yes, but he was a four-year-old at that time. I mean, it was pretty impossible. I think it was in 82, 81, 82. And uh, I said to him, it's impossible, we're, we're not gonna make it. I mean, uh, a young horses, a young horse, a young rider, I mean, it's a miracle. 
I said, okay, Papa, and we look around, we look around, and at that time, we didn't find anything. So one day he said, Roger, if, it, if it's not a nice horse for Mario, it could be a nice horse for me. But I said, for sure, you know, you like Mr. Dice, you'll be sitting on one Mr. Dice. So that's why we bought the horse, and then we made that horse from scratch. I remember Mario was going to school, and I, I rode that horse one year, I think, every day, every morning. It was so nice to ride. Uh, I mean, it was a piece of cake. I mean, it was green, but nice. It was always a uh, quiet horse and nice horse. And then finally, uh, Mario after school and weekend and uh, get on the horse and here we are. That's how we started that damn horse. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. From, from, from nothing. Yeah. Um. Roger, when I mentioned the other day that we were going to have the honor to have you here in this show, I heard one comment from one of my friends saying, I want to know what is Mario's secret because all his horses last forever. So he manages very well the horses. Can you ask him to see if he can share that secret? I mean, does he doesn't jump at home? I mean, is it the vet? Is it, what is it that they last forever and ever at show and top level? So here's the question. If, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Lizard, I, so. I go, I play golf at home, so I don't ride so much. I just show, so that's why. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I tell you, this story it's been it's been on forever. Even here at my barn, when Mario was 13, 14, 15, all the other riders never saw him ride, so they said. What the heck happening? He never ride and he win. But Mario <laughs> ride early in the morning from seven to 10 when he were here. And after that, he go do something else. Either, uh, are you called bike racing or golf or whatever. And I think it's the same. He, he, he is quite an early bird, get on the horse early, try to make them and fit them. And, and at the end of the day, I think, he was he's a good successful horseman i think so i'm, I'm quite sure anyway so so with the combination of the riding of the talent and the horsemanship i think it permitted him to keep the damn horse longer in my opinion you agree with that mario <laughs> yeah of course i agree well you know <laughs> horse management, uh, I, th I think at home it's important that here we we build our facility five six years ago and we really try to do it right um we we have about 20 acres of nice grass field that we ride on and i think i believe that the more we can ride on good grass the longer the horses last i think the the you know, the sand footing, all the, the, the mixing of the fibers and everything. If you keep riding always on that surface, it's much harder on the horses. I think a nice grass field, uh, and we don't over jump at home. Our horses are ready to eat. They know that when they go to the show is to jump and, and we, we don't over jump at home. You know, a couple of times and we keep the horses very fit. And, you know, we have a good farrier, good vet, and uh, we, we try to manage it right. Mario, uh, I have a question for you. In, in your family, everybody is on the sport. And in the back of you, for a long time, is your brother. He managed the, the, the your stable he he take care of the horses and your brother I think he did a very good job what is your opinion you don't think the influence of your brother and you, the, how you take care of your horses is very important but Patrick always is a horseman too well I think you know having a brother and a father that are in the business uh, you know they kind of watch your back so we do the we do all the work together uh obviously i'm not at the barn all day but in certain intents patrice was there all day um i think it's about managing and avoiding the mistake that 
you keep the horses in good health and in a good frame of mind to go to the horse shows. Um, I think, I think it's very important. I think when you have a family livelihood like this, uh, everybody works together and everybody watches out for each other. And, and uh, hopefully that helps keeping the success going. And uh, even Roger, now your grandson working with you too. Yes, uh, he arrived three months ago. Is is involved? You have if, incredible that in one family have all of these people working together and have a beautiful relation is is very important. Uh, your grandson helping you a lot too, Roger. Yes. Yes, but I think it's very good. And actually, uh, it, it, it's all good. But sometimes we have to put our white gloves sometimes to, to discuss and, and see uh, some situation. But that's all right. There's no problem with that. But uh, Samuel arrived uh, here in May. He helped me to organize two, three shows already. Uh, me, I see that like uh, another generation arrive and push you in the back to get better. To to he arrive with with new idea, with new way, uh, and then we have to analyze if they're all good or, or half good or whatever. But I we I'm I'm very open for uh, a new things, a new way of of doing the business. But the base to me leave the same. So um, I think we're fortunate. Lucy, you did a, a great uh, Pan American Games in, um, in Lima. Um, you were in the eighth position, I remember. Maybe is it true? Yeah, I yes? was eighth individual. Okay. Yeah. And your father was in the? I think 16, position. something like this, 16. in the back. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about did you enjoy this day it was special it was uh... <laughs> yeah i mean obviously it was very special it was my first championship it went well it went better than i expected i think as a like fierce competitor i look back on it and i'm very quick to think about all the things i could have done better and you know i shouldn't have had foot in the water here i shouldn't have had a rail there but no, I think in general, it's. I look back on it as an incredible experience, one of the best weeks of my life in show jumping, 100%. Um, and, you know, it's even just more special that we were able to do it together. Lucy. Maybe for your father, all was the younger day for sure. Lucy, all the young generations look up to you. You've been very successful, not only in the ring, but outside the ring. They respect you a lot. What are your goals in the future? What is, if you had a crystal ball and said, I want this to happen, what, what is your major goal, like the pinnacle? Um, I think like a lot of young aspiring athletes, the Olympic Games is the ultimate goal. That's the dream. Um, but I also think that, you know, that's a very rare opportunity and there are a lot of, you know, bumps in the road there it's like a roller coaster to get there and so i think that you have to be able to appreciate the journey along the way so you know being able to ride home every day in our big fields and you know the bonds i have with the horses those are also special for me and i think that's really important in creating a sense of longevity in the sport and being able to get to these sort of you know dream goals like the olympics um so, you know, competing in places like Aachen at the Masters and Spruce and things like that are definitely on my list as well. Um, but if I had to say one, yeah, the, the Olympics. Well, you're four years away from, oh, no, a year away from Tokyo. I mean, there still has a chance. <laughs> and okay. Mario, I have, a question, I have a question for you regarding footing. You mentioned um, that you prefer to ride on a grass. On a, on a softer footing that working uh, constantly in the sand. 
your opinion uh, about the sand footing that is used now in competition. We had several shows, including Rodrigo, was not very happy with the footing because he says it has a lot of grip on it and it's hard on the horses. And second, you can actually go too fast in the jump off because of the grip it offers. What is your opinion of the footing and should it be improved or should be modified or we should keep the same footing in the, in the horse shows? I mean, I think on, on grass, obviously, there's only a certain speed you can go. And I think it tests the rider's ability, the balance a bit more, uh, the, the balance of the horse. If you have your horse in good balance, uh, you know, some days in spruce, we can go as fast as we, we want and, and it holds. Some days, maybe Leopold over water the night before, and it's a little slippery. <laughs> so the riders, the riders have to compensate for that. And, and, the, and the, we're all on the same playing field. So we have to feel our horse and how much you can push it. I agree that on the sand, sometimes it holds you too much and there's no discretion how fast you can go. Uh, I must say that I quite like the way that Ref redid their sand footing. I, I thought it was a huge improvement from the pre previous ground they had. And uh, of course, you know, I, I like it firm a little, but I like it to give also. So, but I think on the sand footing, we will always have the same, same, same feel that there's really much less uh, concern. People go fast and they don't think about it twice. Yeah, and, and that's why we're, we're affecting also the soft tissues of the horses too, because it has no give, right? Exactly. A very yeah, when, when there's no give, it's the hardest on the, on the horses. The horses take a definitely. It, it's harder on them than when it's a little softer. Mario, you don't think the footing need to have a speed limit? That if you go faster, you slip. You don't need. You don't think, but uh, it's a lot of complaint. When the riders arrive to the show, start to say it's a slippery, it's a slippery, but it's a slippery for everybody, and and I think maybe it's a little bit better for the horses at the end. No, I, I agree with you. I, I think that a little give is is uh, is the way to go, um, and if everybody has to slow down, so be it. You have to turn a bit sharper, or go a little wider, or or whatever. I, I, I just think that uh, uh, myself, I prefer a grass footing because the rider has more say and uh, has to ride better or have to get a better balance to, to do well. That's my feeling. And you don't think uh, the sport lose a little bit of interest to, to the crowd when when the rider <clears throat> don't have that influence, but the, the crowd in reality and the fans of the sport, they go there to look in how good are the riders and how, how they, uh, they do and how, how they ride. And losing this quality, the, 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 the opportunity that the riders show these qualities you don't think the sport lose to to the to the fans, losing two ways the health of the horses and in the fans. Are you asking me? Yeah. 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 Yes. I think. What do you think? I think. I think there's something inherently I don't know special or it makes you it makes any event feel more important when you have the crowd and the spectators behind you and them and feeling like they really are watching you and seeing you know the best com horse rider combinations there's definitely a different feel when you walk in the room and you see that I think that Bruce you feel that on Grand Prix day at the Masters more so um Dublin, I really felt that. And the horses feel it too. Um, 
I think sand or grass without spectators, it's a lot harder to, I don't know, I wouldn't say motivate because I think that as competitive riders, we always want to win, but there's something about having spectators there that definitely changes the game. Yeah, the atmosphere is completely different. Mario, you, oh, Ryan, we have. We have uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sigue, sigue. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's fine. Sigue, sigue. Okay, no, no, because we have only about five more minutes, and I know Roger is already in the plans of having a bigger and more exciting event next year with the new partnership. But what about you, Mary and Lucy? Where are you showing next? Are you going somewhere? What is your plan for the fall and the winter? What is your plan for the showing? Um, our next stop will be in Michigan. We do two weeks there. Uh, we'll be doing the 500,000 Grand Prix in Socrates as well. And then I'll actually be going to school for a few months. So I don't have other plans to show yet uh in the next few months after that but then hopefully we'll be able to go back down to florida and start the season there again okay so yeah october and october i know there are fei shows in tryon i think and then november everything's moving back here to wellington is that correct yes yeah all right so i know we're di we're actually we're living in a difficult situation so hopefully everything goes for the better and we can keep competing and having this show so we need the support of everyone so we don't have That's any right. setbacks we need florida to be careful so we can all be there and uh, enjoy the winter again yeah you're completely right i do agree with you in that <laughs> leo <clears throat> you coming <clears throat> from the hunting, but you are a hunt ma ma master of the older club of hunting in America, something like this. <clears throat> and the, the, the sport coming from the hunting, from the, the, the take it to the stadium, the hunt and everything. Do you think the sport losing a lot of the nature of the sport today? and need to come back a little bit more to the nature to 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 have more natural fences and then more on the nature to the sport uh, as you do both the hunting and the and the and the with your experience in both well i think i think that's i think it's two different things um you know like in the two weeks from uh, three weeks from now I'm gonna make a hunter derby in the grass ring, which I have at home. I think Leopoldo, you know what I'm talking about, and Mario. So we'll do a, a, a nice uh, um, derby, hunting derby on the grass. To to follow a bit what Mario said about grass and sand, uh, I tell you one thing: they all like to come and ride on the grass okay it's funny you know they're all coming from small places here in quebec ontario because now the border is still closed our clientele are quebec ontario and and a bit maritime so uh i i don't know uh, uh hunter are very popular here like it is in in united states um right now in my barn i have a few nice hunter uh the difference between that, as you know, and we talk about the the the, the fox hunting, it's it's another ball game. Yes, I am the master of the Montreal Hunt Club, which is the oldest hunt club in North America from 1826. So we still, uh, I still hunt. I had a hunt last Saturday, and I'm, I'm stiff since because I didn't ride much lately. <laughs> we hunt for three hour and a half. Uh, it's funny, the popularity is growing up since a couple of years. We have some very downhill, uh, uh, let's say, field. We, we are, our membership was low, but now it's coming up. It's, uh, I don't know, maybe the COVID helped people stay around and cannot go anywhere else, so they enjoy what they got. To me here in the barn, uh, the COVID helped me a little bit. They get more clients. 
uh, they came off Montreal. Some clients arrived here in Bromo the 1st of March. They never left. Many people work from home now, so they decide to spend more time in, in the sport. Uh, but nevertheless, it's not good for big competition because they said the border will open the 21st of September, but I'm not sure yet. So, like for me to organize a bigger show, if I don't have the U.S. Uh, population, it's impossible. Because in the International Bromo, I have about 250 horse from the United States. So, uh, it was not possible. So, we'll see. We hope uh, it, uh, this situation will be fixed soon. But like Mario said, I think we have to be careful. It's not over yet. I don't think so. Yeah, I agree with, with you, Roger. I think we have to be very careful and uh, be responsible. Yeah. I think that's very important. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sorry to be the bad guy here, but our, our time is due. So I want to let Leopoldo and Carola say your the last comments and to thank you, Roger, Lucy, and Mario for your time. It was very entertaining. We learned a lot. And let me tell you, on my point of view, you're a family that I admire. So it's been a pleasure to have you here. So thank you very much, Leopoldo. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Mario, thank you very much. It was, uh, it was a great time. Mario, uh, for us and Lucy and Roger, for us was a big honor to have a family like you uh, and we don't have a space to put more more persons in the screen, but it's a it's a very very big family in uh, in the sport and helping a lot the sport. And uh, I want to thank you all. And uh, Roger, I hope you continue like this and be young. Don't come in old. Okay, Roger. <laughs> Well, for sure. <laughs> My focus is on you, Leopoldo, so I'm going to stay young. <laughs> you know, for me, it's a great to have you here with, with us. So thank you. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias por estar aquí. Thank you Merci. to all of you. Bye. All right. Well, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Cavalarion.com, Equestria Digital. And thank you again to the Loria family. And please be careful and let's work together to overcome this difficult situation. So I hope to see you again. And please be careful and take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.